Hey guys, it's Brooke and Pippa's back there sleeping. <laughs> if you can hear her snoring, um, I promise you she's back there even though she's hidden. If you haven't seen one of our videos before, Pippa and I travel full-time in my Honda CRV. It's a 2004. We have been in this Honda full-time since May 1st. I prefer to travel like I am car camping. So I am here to show you kind of the ins and outs of bathroom situations on the road. I already did a video previously about my bathroom situation specifically while on the road, but it has changed a lot over the last eight, nine months since I've been on the road. And I figured I'd do an update video as well as give some more options for people who are considering camping maybe this summer, getting into car camping, even if it's not full time. Just because I full time doesn't mean you can't go on the weekend, summer break, um, on a road trip when you're off work, anything like that. So I just really want to make this feel accessible and show you the realities of all of these bathroom solutions that I've tried over the year or so that I've been on the road and give you the pros and cons and the honest review of all of them. Jumping right in, the first bathroom solution I went with, which is what I mentioned in my first video, is the Luggable Lou. And if you don't know what that is, that is okay. It is basically a toilet seat that snaps onto the top of a five gallon bucket. Just one that you would get at Lowe's, Home Depot, anything like that. Um, basically what you do is put a trash bag or a, you know, compostable liner inside. Then you can put some kitty litter in there, um, like kind of like sawdust shavings, things like that to kind of absorb the smell and absorb moisture and then use it like a regular toilet, tie the bag up, throw it in a dumpster. And I used that for a very long time. I loved my Luggable Lou. I liked being able to feel like I was sitting at toilet height. And so if you're a person with mobility issues, you're somebody who cannot squat properly, if you are someone who just likes a more like at home toilet kind of feeling experience, it might be a good choice for you. I really enjoyed it the entire time I was using it, except for a few drawbacks that I'll tell you right now. So the first thing I noticed was that if you did not clean out basically every time you were using it, when it filled up, it got a very difficult to deal with. So if you are on the road traveling, you know it is very hard to find places to throw away trash to begin with and places to throw away poop um is even harder because you can't just be throwing away your poop anywhere <laughs> so the fact that you were going through so many trash bags wrapping it up constantly um it does smell it just started to become more of a pain in the butt <laughs> than a luxury item i stopped using it altogether to pee in because leaving pee in the bucket overnight would create condensation, especially in the summer. So it's like when you wake up to do that morning pee, you were opening the lid and there was like pee condensation on the inside and then all over the toilet seat, which is not a fun experience um, in the morning first thing when you really got to go. So I was only using it for number two after a while and then I accidentally ran over it with my <laughs> with my car, which was, I think, my sign that it was no longer my first choice for bathrooms. And another thing for me is being in a Honda CRV, this is not a large car. This is not a van. This is not um, like one of those big sprinter vans. This is not an RV. So I didn't have a lot of space. There's no way to collapse down a five gallon bucket. So when I changed the layout of my car, I had nowhere to put it without putting it right next to my bed while I was traveling. And I didn't really like that. So eventually I moved on from the Luggable Lou. If you want to check it out for yourself, it might be a good choice for you. After getting rid of the Luggable Lou, I moved on to one of those chair toilets. Um, they are basically like a folding chair with a hole in the middle, uh, like a toilet seat. So I moved on to a chair because one, you could fold it up flat. It was a lot of space I was saving by being able to just slide that under my bed um, when I was traveling. And you could use it with a bag or without a bag. So what I was doing for a long time was just putting it in a spot 
outside of my campsite a little bit, you know, behind a tree or something like that. And I was just peeing through the hole and not using a garbage bag. So I wasn't going through as many garbage bags. And when I did need to go number two, I could just dig a cat hole underneath the chair and use leave no trace practices, dig that six to eight inch cat hole, and then just have to throw away my toilet paper. I didn't need to use it with a bag at all. So I was already moving away from having to use trash bags so often. And if I was in a situation where the ground was maybe too hard, I couldn't dig a cat hole, or um, there was just like not a good spot to set it up if there was too many people around and I kind of had to guard my door or something like that. I still could use a garbage bag with it, uh, but I just didn't have to as often. Also, the setup was really easy. The takedown was really easy. Uh, and I really enjoyed that option. Um, so if you are somebody, same thing, that maybe you don't like squatting, you can't squat, um, you need something that is compact, that feels like a toilet, or maybe is a little bit lower than one, um, but then isn't taking up so much space in your rig, I suggest one of the chair options. Now, <laughs> there is a luxury option that I listed that I will admit I have not tried in the car but I did try it when I was in my RV. If you don't know, I used to have an RV before I moved into my Honda and I had some plumbing issues in my RV. So what I did was ordered one of those little porta potty toilets that you could put water in so you could feel like you're flushing it. And it's basically like a mini RV setup where you have the toilet part on top, you have the holding tank underneath, and then you just go to a dump station and dump the tank when it's full. Now, <laughs> I liked it when I was in the RV because I was used to going to dump stations all the time. Would I do this in the car? Probably not. They take up a lot of space. If you are in a larger van, it probably would be a better option. It does take a little bit more cleaning. It's a little grosser to deal with in my opinion. It takes up a lot of room in your rig. And if you really want the comforts of home to feel like you have like a little porta potty, I think you should get one. It's not my style. It's not something that I want to spend my time dealing with, especially since they're still small. They usually only hold about five gallons. And so you're probably dumping that, you know, every couple days if you're peeing in it, especially. And so I just, it's not for me, but it might be for you. And I wanted to list that here. The last kind of drawback is that they are a little bit more expensive. They usually range from like, 75 to like 150 dollars depending on the type that you get but it could be the perfect option for you and that's why i wanted to mention it but it's just not mine so you want to know what i do now right you're like you mentioned all these things that you don't do anymore so what do you do now <laughs> well i just feel outside now <laughs> i have over the last nine months eight months, however long I've been on the road, have gone completely bare bones in my bathroom setup. I don't carry around a toilet and I don't carry around any urination device. I just pee outside. <laughs> it is free. There is no cleanup. The only thing that I have to do is throw away my toilet paper. You can do it pretty much anywhere. You can go in between your doors. So sometimes if I'm in a, like a, I'm in the desert right now. I'm in a more open area. I just open both of my doors and pee in between the passenger door and the driver's side door if there's people around. And the, there are a few drawbacks with that. So one, you need the ability to squat. So if you can't squat all the way down, you do need to be able to do that. If you have bad knees, you have a bad back. Um, if you're just maybe not as mobile, maybe that's not the right choice for you. At this point in my life, I still have the ability to squat and I'm going to take advantage of it while I can. And so all I feel like my drawback is or was until I fix it and I'll let you know is that there was splashback. So in a lot of dry clim climates, if you've ever <laughs> peed outside before, you know that if the ground is dry, it will splash on your feet. So how I have combat that is leading into another solution is the pee cup. I love me a pee cup. I, let me tell you, the pee cup out of all the things that I've purchased for this vehicle and for my car living, car camping setup has been hands down my favorite item. 
The pee cup allows me to pee outside. I just pee into the cup. There's no splashback. I can dump it right out. So there's no smell. I can go in the middle of the night in my little area right here behind my seat. I can squat right back there, pee into the cup, toss it out in the morning. Um, it is life-changing for me. I don't have to hold it. I don't have to go outside in the middle of the night. I don't have to worry about peeing on my shoes, splashback, anything like that. Um, if it's raining, I can go inside. If it is windy, I can go inside. If there's too many people around, I can go inside and just dump it out in nature outside of my campsite, just like I would if I were to walk over to pee in that area. It's inexpensive. My favorite cups, I have shown them, I'm sure, while I'm talking. My favorite cups are the plastic 40 ounce wide lid cups from like Quick Trip, Safeway, um, any of those little gas stations. They usually are like a dollar twenty-five. Get yourself a soda, and then you have your pee cup. And I I don't have a new pee cup all the time. I reuse mine. So I take my Dr. Bronner soap and I rinse it out every couple days. And honestly, it has been the best solution for me. I get asked a lot about how my pee cup doesn't fall over in the middle of the night and I don't accidentally spill in the back of my car. And the very easy, again, simple solution I've come up with is to just place the cup inside a roll of duct tape because I use duct tape for everything in here, including my floors if you haven't seen my floor videos. And I just set it right in there like it's a cup holder in the back, doesn't tip over, and I don't have to worry at all about knocking it down in the middle of the night, and I dump it out first thing in the morning. So now let's talk about my pooping solution. So if I'm peeing in a cup, where am I pooping? <laughs> like I said, I don't travel with my chair anymore. So I just dig a cat hole now and poop into a hole. I just squat right over it. I've gotten really good at it. If you need a good like beginner tip, test where you're going to dig the hole first. Make sure you can dig a hole that follows leave no trace practices. It needs to be six to eight inches deep. It needs to be over a hundred feet away from a water source. Um, there's a lot of tips on leave no trace. I'll leave the link below. Please make sure you're following these practices um, because that's what keeps our free campsites open to everyone and protects the environment. But I would say don't try to dig the hole first when you're learning and then poop in the hole, <laughs> it's hard to aim your poop, you know? So what I do or what I did do to learn where my poop kind of goes is I would poop on the ground first, just on the ground, dig my hole, make sure it's deep enough, and then take a branch or a stick or something and push it into the hole and then cover it up and bury it. Make sure you do not bury your toilet paper. Even if it's biodegradable or something like that, it's not. Do not bury your toilet paper. Take it with you and throw it away in your trash. So this method obviously does require a trowel or a shovel um, to be able to get through that. There are obviously, like I said before, there are some drawbacks because sometimes the ground is too hard or, you know, there's not enough privacy or things like that. But this obviously does require the ability to squat again, but it is a good solution and it's probably what most people do. And you're like, but Brooke, what if there's too many people around? What if the weather is bad? What if you have diarrhea in the middle of the night? I get this question all the time. But what do you do if you have to poop at 2 a.m.? I'm going to tell you because I've had diarrhea in the middle of the night before. I'm not ashamed of my solution to this problem and I am going to show you how to fix it. So what I found out is that you don't need the chair or the bucket to just poop in a bag. And you know what? I'm not ashamed to say that I've had to do it in bad weather, in emergencies, or when there's too many people around. Like when I was camping on the wall at the Badlands, there was too many people around. There was nowhere to go off into the woods to dig a hole. And sometimes it sneaks up on you. It's too far to drive into town. There's no bathrooms there. So here's my method. 
take a tall kitchen bag. <laughs> I'm gonna walk you through the whole thing. I want you to succeed in your car camping journey. <laughs> <laughs> you are gonna take the seam of that garbage bag and you are gonna rip part of it because you need some like play in the garbage bag, right? You're going to squat down. You're gonna pull that garbage bag over your butt like pants. So you have it covering your front and your back. And then you're just gonna squat there and you're just gonna poop freely right into that bag. Now, I have a trick for you. Use your pee cup first to pee in the cup. So then you're not having so much liquid in the bag with the poop, right? Because you could potentially spill, whatever. So anyways, after you're done pooping in the bag, simply pull the bag out from underneath you, tie it up, set it to the side, wipe, throw that toilet paper away, throw everything into a second garbage bag, and go throw it away like as soon as possible because it will start to smell if you can't tie it up set it outside don't forget about it don't leave it at your campsite don't be gross but let me tell you this has worked for me not only on my diarrhea night but on an emergency i had some like bad milk situation happening when i was in the grand tetons and just like if i was you know, driving through, I could not find a bathroom and I had to get in the back and I had to just do what I had to do. If you know what I mean? So this is a good tip, whether you're even, you know, car camping or not, if you have IBS, something like that, and you just have to go, it's what I figured out works the best. So you don't accidentally spill or do anything. I've never had an incident. <laughs> Please make sure you throw it away, dispose of it properly. Make sure nobody's exposed to your human bodily fluids. Now I'm going to go for the obvious. If you urban camp, if you're not out in the nature, just go in somewhere to pee or to go poop. Sometimes if I am close enough to a spot, if I'm near a rest area, if I'm near a gas station, I'll just go drive there in the morning if it's a couple miles away, do my business, and then come back to my site the rest of the day. Running around town just the same way as you would if you were driving around doing errands, run into Walmart, run into the grocery store, lots of public bathrooms are back open now. Obviously there's downsides that public bathrooms can be really gross. Um, so I tend to prefer using my pee cup even unless I have to go poop. I don't try to use public restrooms as much. I get asked all the time what my favorite like pee urination device is and I hate all of them. It's my pee cup. <laughs> my pee cup is my favorite like urination device. Um, but those urination devices exist for a reason for people maybe with mobility issues that not, cannot squat, uh, people who prefer to stand. They're a little bit more discreet, but they have a very, very, very steep learning curve. Let me tell you, I have been car camping for years and years and years, and all of them I have peed my pants in because a lot of them advertise that you can like pee standing up then, right? Just like how if you had different hardware down there, you know? So that's always the draw, and it seems to always be like it works perfectly or you literally pee your pants because it, they leak, especially the silicone ones. They, if you press too hard and break that seal, you pee all over yourself. I have a preferred one it's called the pee style and it is hard plastic. It's very simple. I'll have it linked below. Um, that's the only one I've been able to figure out how to use and use properly. But since I've moved to like my pee cup, I have um, not used the pee style ever again. There is also another device that I almost purchased and I'll link it and I can say I've never used it, but it works very similar to the pee cup. Um, and it's basically just like a more like curved top part instead of a, like a cup cup. And then it has like a little basin underneath that you can pee into. They're just not my favorite. I know that they exist for a reason and a lot of people might really love them. But if you're looking for my personal opinion on them, they are not my favorite. I like to do things pretty simple at this point. <laughs> and using some of those devices are very complicated. 
and have very disastrous <laughs> results, at least for me. <laughs> and the other thing I wanted to mention and something that I've recently started to use is my reusable pee cloths. They are reusable toilet paper for pee only. Pee only. You are just supposed to like dab, dab, dab just a little bit right after you've peed. Do not use it to fully wipe or anything like that. You snap it shut. You can hang it up so it can dry and you can reuse it and then just hand wash them every few days. So I have started recently using those. I don't have a full review on it yet, but I'm really liking them so far. So if you want to see a review after a few weeks of me using the pea cloth, pea rag, whatever you want to call it, um, let me know. I will be more than happy to do that for you, but I hope this video maybe gave you a few more ideas of what you can do while car camping, car living, uh, etc. <laughs> while you're on the road for bathroom solutions, it doesn't need to be as gross or hard or as complicated as you think it does. I know we all are afraid of our own stuff that comes out of us for some reason, but trust me, it's way easier if you're just dealing with your own and you get to choose the way that you like the best. And that's why all of these different products exist. And if one product works for you and doesn't work for somebody else, that is okay. It is okay. You don't need to um like shame other people for what they need to use if it exists somebody's probably using it and loving it and keeping that product you know on the market so just go ahead and try some out see how they work out for you and let me know let me know what you like maybe you do something that I haven't even thought of either but yeah I um, hope this helped you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave me a comment about what you use, if this helped you or not. And I hope to see you guys on the next one. Bye!